Morning, everyone. Welcome to the On Time, On Target morning brief on today, Friday, September 4th. If you're checking us out on replay, thank you so much for checking uh, checking us out. If you'd like to join us full time, we're a group of investors to get together in the morning, talk both long term and short term investing uh, with primarily me na narrating the meeting this morning. And we have other folks that you don't see that are often a chat window and a question and answer window that are providing their inputs and I'm answering their questions that way. If you'd like to get more information or a free trial, contact me at steve at ototnow.com and you can join us. All right, so had a little difficulty this morning with the AirPods, so we'll go with the normal microphone. If there's any issues hearing me, then put it in the chat and we will correct it. All right, as far as welcome to the brief, we're gonna invest with military precision today. The rest of this will be a fighter pilot style briefing in the morning. Mission objectives today, we're gonna to grow our money, protect our money and live off our money. Today specifically, coming off of yesterday, which we were overdue for that, by the way, uh, the we're going to talk about protecting our money. We're going to talk about hedging instruments that are out there. I will talk a little bit about protective puts. I generally do not use these, but it is a valid way of protecting a portfolio. Uh, so I'll talk to how it works and why I don't use it. Uh, so you have both sides of the argument there. All right, as far as our flow, we're going to go long, short, open, short, long, which means that we're going to talk about long-term investing primarily at the beginning. Uh, we're going to switch to short-term investing within 10 minutes of the open, and then we're going to uh, go back to long-term investing and the question of the day at the end. We're going to take a market review around the world, lots of markets in motion last night and again this morning, and we're going to talk about our headline reviews, including the new unemployment number we just got this morning. Then we're going to talk about long-term investments, which are all hedges, which are is that mostly uh, some names you may not have heard of because we don't normally talk about these, but we'll show how they act yesterday, which ones I like, and if you want to use these, how you can use them. Uh, they're, most of them are trading vehicles. You're going to hop in and hop out of them, which isn't for everybody. I'm not trying to tell you to do that, but there are times that I do that, and at least we'll, uh, I'll explain that to you. Uh, we'll get into short-term day trading opportunities within 10 minutes of the open. We should be able to find things falling off the cliff yesterday or today um, since everything was down big yesterday. And then we'll get back and transition to the long-term stuff. As far as the, uh, if you have any issues this morning, contact me at uh, steve at ototnow.com for real-time tech support and we'll take care of your needs there. And standard disclaimer applies. This is an educational briefing, so you have to do your own due diligence for acting on anything you hear in this presentation. All right, the first screen we're gonna take a look at is I'm gonna share out to you the Think Pipes screen from TD Ameritrade. It's just popping up right now. So what you should see is a one-year look at the SPY. And of course, your eyes immediately go to right here and the big move down yesterday. So yes, we were overdue. You've heard me say like a broken record that the market needs to sell off. This is a perfect example of the markets that take the stairs higher, take the stairs up or the elevator, the escalator up and the elevator down. So that happens on occasion. You have these big down days. Yesterday was pretty pronounced, if you will. So you look back to other big down days. We had some congestion here at the beginning of June, uh, some sizable down days, none as big as this one. Um, and then you look at, we had one here, you know, back in March, we had a couple days that did limit down where you open up and hit that 7% down in the next, in the first, you know, 15 minutes of market open that can get everybody's attention. So, um, pretty big day overall, but not the end of the world. So when people call me up and say, Steve, I lost $150,000 yesterday. I'm like, okay. Well, if you're going to consider that a loss, let's look back to exactly that six trading days ago. So your net worth dropped to where you were, I don't know, end of August. You know how poor you were on August 28th? Well, yeah, you're back to being that poor, right? So you got to keep it all, you, you know, no nope, phone's not ringing off the hook telling me all the hundreds of thousands that you made right there, but the phone rings out here telling me what you lost on that day. So keep it in perspective to where we are on the year, which is still above where we were in the February highs. We never thought we would be here. So even if the market did it again, and I told you the other day, I don't remember which day it was, we could come down to this 320 range. And honestly, we're just talking regular math, reversion to the mean, market's coming in. Don't get excited. 
uh, that's all part of a market that is, you know, doing a normal market moves. When you look at the QQQ, which again is the NASDAQ, you know, even less of a concern yesterday when the phone's ringing of, yeah, you had to go back to your net worth on August 24th, boo-hoo. But, I mean, come on, man, look at this <laughs> clear skies that we've had in uh, the tech world. So, yeah, the tech's overbought. I mean, Tesla's too high. You know Apple's too high. People go tell me Apple's, you know, going to double and triple in the next two years. Well, it just moved up 70% in like four months. So give it a second before it can move higher, okay? So uh, that's why we have covered, those of you who have larger portfolios have covered calls on all these positions because that way when the market sells off, you make money back in the calls. It's a kind of a brilliant hedge and you guys don't like them when the market's going straight up, but you certainly like them because uh, it's mitigating the losses, losses, because you're not selling um, on the days down. So that's why they're there and you're making extra money along the way. All right. So there's the SPY again. Let's take a look at the past five days. So again, all we've ever done is go straight up, up, up. And then you have a big day that's pronounced all the way into the, uh, the low, which was within an hour. And then it is a good sign when you see a pretty sizable move up, a couple hundred points on the Dow. We're not looking at a Dow chart, but it was you know Dow down over a thousand. You think, okay, that's a big deal. Drops 800, not as a big deal. So um, yeah, we saw a recovery. That's always a good sign. It went bam, right after the market closed on into last night. I did not get a video out to my regular investors uh, because I kind of wanted to see how today went. Today can go either way. Either we bounce, going all is good again because we got some good uh, unemployment news this morning, or it can simply roll over and continue on down. So I don't know that answer. I don't have the crystal ball. And Fridays are kind of picky anyway. Uh, so we shall see. Um, but here's what you can see this morning. Had some optimism, sold off, and then we just got a great jobs uh, number, jobs creation number, that is. So the unemployment news is down. So, all right. So that is the uh, five-day look. As far as the earnings calendar, this morning, you know, it's a Friday morning, so there's not much out, a little bit boring there. But Thursday, last night, we had DocuSign release uh, earnings. And of course, they beat earnings just as we expected they would. The funny part is it gets lost in the fact that the market's falling off a cliff, so nobody cares. Uh, so instead of moving up 40% like Zoom did, they moved up a whopping 1%, even though they had a similar beat. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how today goes. But that's where we have been on the... Uh, trades. Here are the, uh, this is the trading screen we'll come back to with the uh, SPY on the left. You can see this morning SPY is already kind of working its way uh, back up. All right, let's share out to you the CNBC page and we'll talk about some of the headlights, excuse me, uh, the action around the world. So refresh that real quick. So you can see the Dow's in the green, so is the S&P barely. NASDAQ's still down a percent. Does that make sense? Sure. Everybody was talking, you know, tech bubbles and everything else. So yeah, tech's going to sell off. Um, that's okay. Not even concerned about it at all. All right, let's see what else is going on. All right, this is Europe. Europe up across the board. Kind of surprising coming off our big red day yesterday. Uh, Asian down, uh, Asia down um, across the board. That is more in line with what you would expect to see after a big American uh, sell off. Bonds, a decent move up actually in the 10 year, so and across the board there. So again, the policy that's out there of the interest rates lower longer is actually kind of healthy. So it'd be nice if the 10 year could get above 0.7 and then of course work its way up to one would be nice. Oil, um, still hanging above that $40 mark. I'm not really concerned unless it drops below that. Interestingly enough though, yesterday the precious metals sold off. Yeah, markets generally, market sells off, precious metals go up. Well, remember when it's a people going to cash, which, you know, people have short-term memories. They either forgotten completely about March or they have a huge scar in their life about March. So when they see a day that where the market moves down a couple percent, it's the sell to all cash now. OMG, get out now. Uh, save yourself, the ship's going down, hmm, whatever. Um, those sort of people end up always on the sidelines. Uh, so they can have fun with that. 
Uh, but yeah, when you're selling everything, including your gold and silver, that's a move, that's a money flow out uh, sort of thing. So, all right, let's come back to the main page and we will take a look at the primary number this morning. You know, Dow futures up 200 points. Why? Because of this increase in jobs. So 1.4 million new jobs out there and unemployment rate, it's on here somewhere, I wrote down 8.4%, which you think, okay, that's kind of a heinous uh, um, unemployment rate, but that's pretty good compared to what we've been talking about. And, uh, you know, we've talked about unemployment rates up in the 30%. Remember back to, yeah, six months ago, not even six months ago, right? Uh, we're going to shut down. We're going to the Great Suppression. Um, yeah, well, we did that, and now we're back to only 8.4% unemployment rate. So, uh, not bad. All right, yeah, here's a, here's a funny headline. This is about the same as uh, when people call me yesterday and tell me how much they lost. Well, put it in quotes. You didn't lose anything that you didn't just gain uh, a week ago. So, yeah, these guys lost $25 billion. What what that you know? What's the rest of the story? They made twenty five billion in the past six days. Yeah, they're not telling that story, right? So let's uh, get the big headline grab. OMG, I'm going to lay awake at night and feel sorry for these four people. No, I'm not. Uh, they've been printing money for decades, so they will continue uh, to do that. I am sure. Yeah, it will be interesting. Uh, coronavirus, you're seeing the numbers kind of spike again. So going back into school, maybe, um, I don't know, maybe it's being politicized a little bit going into the election. I don't know. But we certainly, I think, as you see uh, high school slash college slash pro sports, we've got the NFL football coming up, which again is kind of a big litmus test for everybody. They're starting to talk about having fans again. So it's like, okay. Uh, you know, we're getting back to normal, maybe. Um, college sports, at least at UT, those are the ones I'm familiar with, are all going to in some capacity. Um, so we'll see. If we can pull that off and uh, everybody doesn't die of COVID-19, then we could be on our way back to what I would call normal. So, all right, let's see what other headlines we have out there. But yeah, I do think when you have your big Labor Day weekend, everybody getting out, about, out and about for the last time. Um, these big beach pictures, of course, have been kind of a hot button issue on, oh my gosh, there's all the young kids infecting themselves. I don't know. I've been to the beach three times during this thing and you, there, beaches are pretty big. You can stay away from people if you want to. And even when there's a lot of people there, you can still stay away from them. And most people do. Um, you saw some, yeah, there's some college little groups that were 20, 30 people partying, but other than that, everybody's pretty much given a good distance to everybody else. All right, let's see, what else? Unlikely ready by November, I don't think that's true. If I had to bet, and I'm not going, I'm not a gambler, but if uh, I do take, uh, you know, I basically look at things through probability, and if you would go to like a vegasinsider.com, I bet you that the odds are that we do have a vaccine by November, regardless of what this person just said. Yeah, El Elarian, yeah, he's kind of a gloom and doom kind of guy, but yeah, 10% fall easily, that would be a total of 15%, and that's called a normal market correction. Remember, kids, those things do happen, and they're normal. So don't get excited. Everybody gets excited if it falls another 10%. Again, yeah, with the, I had to help some people with math. So if the market if falls 10% and you're taking full market risk, which I'm not recommending, if your portfolio is a million dollars and it falls 10%, that will be a hundred thousand dollars. And yeah, that may be more than you make in a year. So, you know, that's why I'm saying don't take full market risk. If you don't, if you can't handle a number like that, if you can handle then get back in there uh, and don't worry about it. So. All right, let's see what else there's DocuSign on the move up. Uh, Tesla sold off now 20% in four days. So, you know, my take on that, I'm laughing all the way, right? But we shall see. All right, let's switch over to some of the hedging opportunities that are out there. So this is the, this is the one I use. You may have seen this in your portfolio, especially if you just dump some money in, this is exactly where I put it. And I already took profits. Um, some, not all, because uh, I, I, I think we're going to see increased volatility. So 
I love volatility around the 23 uh, point. We talk about it every morning. We talk about whether you know what's happening to it. Uh, it spiked over 30 yesterday, and as you can see in this chart, it closed at 3171. Uh, I scale out, you know, when you get a huge gain like this, this was a, you know, 13% move yesterday, especially when you put a large chunk of money in it, you have to start scaling out. So I put a fence in at 3050 is when I sold a couple hundred shares. I will have other fences that are built in. So if this thing shoots up, which it can, when you look, this is March, it goes from 10, you know, 10 to 70, these things can move. So you will kind of want to have your scaling out built in because they move down just as fast as they move up. So if you don't have limits set in to kind of scale out, then you can miss this. And if you miss that, then why'd you do it? So if you're going to take volatility trades, put some stop limits in so you're taking profits on the way up. Uh, I can help you with those if you have any questions on it. But that's what I wanted to show you. And then, of course, when you look at FinViz on these trading instruments, you know they don't have any data. Right, they're just literally just playing the uh, whatever the underlying instrument is. In this case, it's volatility. All right, let's take a look over at some other hedging instruments. We're going to go to uh, Schwab, Street Smart, Edge. Now, the VXX is the one I talked about. That's up here. That's that big move up yesterday, and it's been steadily increasing. Do I think we can hit 40 going into the election? Yes, but not today. Um, but yeah, going into election, I think we can get excited again. Again, here was that June time frame, touch 40. So I'm probably all out by 40, to be honest. I'm not going to be greedy. I'm not going to hold it for 70 or anything. I don't expect that kind of move. But certainly put the money in at 23. If I take it all back out by about 40, that's, I don't know, 60 70% in a few weeks. Yeah, that's called being smart. And that's how you make money if the market continues to sell off. Now, your big portfolio is going down. But on these side, you know, side basically investments, you are making money and you can make significant amount of money doing it. So VXX is one way. You can also just take the market short. Uh, the issue with, if you know, I'm not a big take the market short kind of guy because I believe in America and American pride and capitalism and all that. And that, that's going to make us all rich or richer, however you want to say it. Um, but uh, there are times to short the market. This is another way when people say, I can't shorten my IRA. It's like, yes, you can. You just don't know how. And the SH, which is the upper right one, that's you buy that. That is basically short. And you can tell that if you shorted the market from March uh, because you were like, oh, no, the market's going to go to zero. It's over because of COVID, I guess. Um, you can see how much money you would have lost shorting the market. So be careful shorting the market. It's, there's rare, rarely times to do it. But, and if you do it, generally you wanna do it over a short term uh, perspective. Even yesterday, so look at people, the professional shorts. Yeah, they made back literally chump change yesterday and it was a huge down day. So generally not worth it in my opinion. In the middle two blocks, I have gold and silver. You can see yesterday on the big down market move day, they didn't move up at all. So yeah, how much for that thesis? That's why I don't use them for that. If you want it in your portfolio, fine. It's more of an inflation hedge than it is anything else. So you've been, you heard it here. Um, all right, UVXY, anything in this market because people are greedy uh, and I don't, I, don't, I don't use these personally. Um, there's one that I use for national, natural gas, but Generally, I don't use these. They're triple levered. Well, I have plenty of exposure in the VXX to what I want to do. I'm not going to get down here and get insane with the triple levered VXX, which is the UV, the ultra volatility play. Okay. Uh, yeah, if you want to trade these, the one good thing you know about them is they'll move. But that they'll do. <laughs> uh, now, moving up or down is that 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 can be a, a painful experience. But when you look at it, it moved from 20 to basically 29, to where this one's moving from 23 to 31. This one's you know th that's what a you know 40 you know whatever percent move that is. This is going to be more. And obviously, it went up to 120 during this time frame. So I generally am staying away from these sort of things. But you can use them if you want. And to talk more about Wall Street greed, they came out with a hedge fund called Hedge. Basically, covered calls, all of this stuff wrapped into one. You want to talk about a dog, look at this thing. How much money can I lose here? I'm going to be at the top of the market, hedge my way all the way down to losing 50%. And then what did it do yesterday? What, it, it sneezed higher? 
It's like, come on, this whole thing, this whole thing is designed to scream higher when the market sells off and it just it doesn't do anything. It's like, so stay away from nonsense like this. All right, that's enough there. Let's go and start to take a look at some short names. I'm pulling up briefing.com, looking for my favorite, what's my gapping up and down stuff. So gapping up, again, we're looking five to 10% gapping up. We will check to make sure that there's 100,000 shares of volatility. And we're looking to gap and go, which means if it's gapping up, we want to take it long. If it's gapping down, we want to take it short. We're going to be talking risk units. If you don't understand risk units, go to ototnow.com and read all about it under resources. So DOMO, D-O-M-O, is gapping up 6%. Uh, down here, it tells you kind of why. NX is gapping up 5%. Sometimes it tells you why, not always. IMAB, uh, let's see, that is up significantly. That is a merger, 21%. We'll take a look at it. LMPX, 15% acquisition. OBSV, what was acquisition Thursday, yesterday, evidently, 6%. Those are all up. That's an equity offering. Plug up 4.2%. That's been hit hard. That's obviously an EV uh, battery maker we talk about quite regularly. All right, Michaels upgraded 3%. Not going to touch Michaels. There's DocuSign. Really, DocuSign was up yesterday. Now it's gapping down, minus 7% after beating earnings. Uh, named a new CFO. Okay. Uh, Rick, that's Rick's uh, Cabaret Adult Entertainment. So that's gapping down. We'll take a look at uh, co increased company increased the dividend and it sells off. Tesla down another 5% this morning. So stacking up, that'll be 23%. Falls a 9% drop yesterday. So that's a continuation. And then uh, W. Uh, what's that? Wayfair uh, W is down 5% on a downgrade. And that's it that's jumping off of that page. So let's go ahead and take a look at those. Yeah, five and a half minutes till the open. So we'll look at the long names first. D-O-M-O. -O. I don't know what Domo does. Pretty light on... We'd have to wait on the low vol, but it's certainly setting up, get up to 37, up to 41. It's been up to 46, so it does have room to move higher. All right, NX, if I can read my own writing, gapping up. QuanX, I do not know what they do either. Um, building products, okay. Uh, there they are moving higher, low volume, so we're really not going to touch that. Low vol or no vol, really. IMAB has the volume, 35 up to 43. We're going to zoom out here. That's in. Let's go out. Okay, bunch of uh, licensing stuff with... AbV, that might be able to move higher. I'm not so excited about it. It's already up 21%. Um, LP, LMPX, Automotive, 13 to 15. Oh, that's the uh, acquires two dealerships. So I'm not sure I could put a whole lot of money behind uh, car dealerships right now. So I'm going to pass on that one. OBSV. Again, you're at the uh, equity offering leveled kind of down low. I would stay out of that range. So not interested in that either. And then plug, see if that has anything interesting going higher. I do like plug, plenty of volume, 11.55 to 23. Let's see what the headline is. Uh, passive stake, I like that. I think you could, uh, and BioNTech is another name that's on the move here. You know, that's one we know of. So let's see, 11.15 to 12.23, this would be my number long, number one long if the market continues long. So 
again, it uh, meets our gap criteria and volume and has the thesis on an upgrade. So I like that. Let's take a look at the shorts. Three minutes to the open. DocuSign, why would that be gapping down? To 43, down to 233. Don't really like that. Lulu got cut this morning. Let's take a look at Lulu. Uh, didn't go down much. So don't really like DocuSign. Let's take a look at Rick's. I could see Rick's probably being hit by this COVID thing. And of course I'd be wrong. Look at this. 21 to 20 RCI hospitality. It says gapping down, but it's up right now. I have to circle back to that one. Let's take a look at Tesla. 407 down to 400, that's kind of a key level, not much of a gap down, but we'll certainly take a look at that short. And then W is the last one we'll take a look at before we get set up here. Wayfair, I was correct, 275 down to 267. Downgraded to neutral. So does this have room to fall? Yes, it does. I like that it's coming out of uh, high there. So that'll be our number one short is a W. So that meets our criteria. So have my notes set up. All right. So a minute prior, we're going to switch out over to TD Ameritrade. And I'm going to show you on the left all the way, we're going to put uh, the SPY and then we're going to have plug. I'll talk to these once I get put them in there. And then we have Tesla. That'll be a short. And then we have W as our main short. All right, that is set up. All right, everybody, welcome to the play of the day. We have four screens set up here on the TD Ameritrade ThinkPipes system. All the way to the left, we have the SPY set up again the futures looking on another screen are uh spy is barely hanging out in the green uh, so you can see a lot of movement there and a movement net momentum down going into the open uh, we have the plug plug is a long play so again plug would be long so we have our set up here at maybe a 10 cent stop 15 cent we have tesla short and wayfair short Wayfair is my favorite short here. So have your tickers uh, set up for Wayfair. We're gonna be watching that as it opens. All these have the volume and all of them have the gap. There is the open. So we're gonna zoom in on plug, zoom in on Tesla and zoom in on <coughs> Wayfair. <coughs> all right, Tesla's erased its gap. It was down earlier and then it was up. So it's kind of even, don't really like that. Uh, as far as looking at plug, looking for an entry point for it to go higher, we would need the overall market to go higher before we take that. However, we can take Wayfair short at any point in time. So that's what we're going to look to do. So it's a $265 stock. So we're going to need a, let's see, 265 to 270. A probably, since it's not jumping around, we're going to go with around a. We'll watch it, but I'm thinking a $3 stop. That would be a $9 move, again, to get to our 3R point is what I'm kind of looking for here. So we're going to just let that do its thing. We're going to watch the overall market to kind of get the trend of what's going on. Um, plug selling off a little bit. Tesla moving higher, so not going to touch that from a short perspective. So we'll get rid of Tesla. We'll look at Rick's Entertainment. Not a lot of movement there. Low vol. Uh, let's see. DocuSign. We'll see what DocuSign's doing. So there's your gap down in DocuSign. I'm not going to short DocuSign, even though it is moving down there. That's too strong. All right. Over here, 265 is our entry point in Wayfair. If it hits 265 even on the downside, then we're going to use a $4 stop to get above 269. So 265, where I have the pencil, have that set up. Again, this is a short, if it hits it. If it doesn't hit it, no big deal, we will move on.
and it did hit it. So my bad. So 265, we are in the trade. We'll have to take it here at 264. So I didn't get it at 265. So 264, we're going to go up 269 as our stop. So 264.35, hopefully you got a better entry than I did because I was on the wrong screen. This is our stop up here at 269. We're going to do a little bit of math. It's about a four and a half dollar stop. And again, we're taking this. I'll draw the arrow to the downside so you know which way we're taking this. All right. So we are into this trade. 269 is that upper stop. So if it hits it, we're out. And we'll take our lumps and go on. Again, this is Wayfair. Short, plenty of room to run to the downside. That's a terrible arrow, but that's what we're looking at. Market screaming higher, that's working against us. So if it hits 269, we're out. And it's pretty darn close. Uh, didn't quite there, it hit it. So we're out of that trade. So again, Wayfair stopped out for a 1R loss. Um, the good news is the market is chugging higher, and the NASDAQ actually, after being down a percent in the opening or pre-market is now up half a percent. So we'll see if Wayfair turns around and ends up working here, but uh, plug, not going much higher there. We'll get rid of DocuSign. We'll kind of surf around uh, and see what's going long. So Domo was a long at 42. It's already moved up another 10% since it opened. So boy, that would have worked. Um, it was low vol. Uh, let's look at NX. NX was up 5% and then kind of jumped higher going into the open, still kind of low vol for to be able to get in a trade like that. Again, good news over in the SPY, we're getting close to that, you know, up over half a percent there. So market chugging higher. Let's see what else we have. IMAB was a long that we were looking at, up 13%, kind of selling off since the open though. All right, LMPX. Another name up 13%. Would not have been able to get into a trade with that big move down there. OBSV. Hanging at that 5%. Again, that's a tough price point to get in. Up 5% though. And then plug, that's one we have over here on the left. Uh, plug and blink travel together. So we'll just take a look at blink. Which you know is a fave of mine, basically sitting at the open. 656. You could, if you were in a, if you think the market's gonna continue higher here, you could take blink long. With a 24 cent, call it 25 cent stop for all the way down to 650, draw the line at the low of the day. And 650 safe. Eh, you can go all the way down to 635 if you really want to protect yourself. But again, looking long and uh, looking long and blank. I'm not going to call another trade, but that is how you look at that. Let's go to. I'm looking off on another screen to see what's in play today as far as going back long. All right, Apple crowd favorite for many different reasons. <clears throat> Making a little money back today. We'll leave the uh, couple day chart on here. So you see it moving back up a percent and a half. So that'll get everybody <clears throat> back happy again. Uh, bank stocks have been moving higher during this time. They actually moved up yesterday when everything else was selling off. Uh, JP Morgan was the name I'm looking at there. Uh, Tesla, we saw it had that up earlier. Again, that has been a big move uh, down. That's moving back up. So again, when you look where it was touching 380 this morning, again, from 380 to 4, <clears throat> 420, that's a 10% change right there. So moving higher. Wayfair is starting to work here. Let's zoom out and then back into that. So again, this is where we had it. Um, unfortunately, yeah, there's no way we're going to put a $10 stop in there. Um, but I do think Wayfair continues to go on to work, but we'll see. Um, so our entry was basically a terrible entry, if you will. Uh, had I missed that, I wanted to get in at 265, which would not have been much better. 
uh, there's no way I would have been protected from that move out up, but um, we'll see. It'll probably continue to work. All right, let's see other long names. Let's check LKNCY because it's our favorite coffee. It's still selling off out there. Not good. And then checking Workhorse, big EV player. You know, it's a favorite of mine, up 5%. So sold off from down to 20s all the way down to the 17, then moving back higher. Another EV name we'll take a look at real quick is Neo. Also moving back higher. So, all right. So across the board, we've got the Dow up almost a percent. NASDAQ up half a percent, S&P up half a percent. We're going to go over and take a look at the long names. So again, there's the five-day chart while we're looking at it. Uh, let's see, some names that are up. Northwest Bio has been in play. These are options. Again, options uh, covered calls is what you see out of me. Workhorse 4%, Tesla 3%. DAL is Delta Airlines, Nicola, Bank of America, Prudential. So again, there's JP Morgan. We just saw a flash in here up a couple percent. So some pretty big names. Let's see what's on the downside. PayPal selling off. Facebook down a percent and a half. Really, when you look at it, coming off a big, uh, this is really pretty positive for a Friday. So I could see this. Uh, I, it looks like the optimism is back and that the sell-off will be short-lived you never know i mean what we're eight minutes into the day but certainly there's buying going on um you know for all the people that called me yesterday saying said what are you buying i'm like i'm not buying anything i'm gonna wait to see how this thing plays uh plays out so we shall see um so all right so let's see we'll go back to this chart wayfair is working but we're not in it let's check the vix right so that should be selling off today. <clears throat> so again, I liked it at 23. We had that big move yesterday. I took profits, uh, shaved some here at 30.50. Even with the market move higher, of course, it just nosed over while I'm talking. Um, yeah, I think the VIX stays above 30 today, almost irrelevant of what the market does. So uh, again, I like it in here. I'll probably start peeling off some, some maybe up at uh, 33 to try to be out completely by 40. All right. So that's what we are talking about there. <clears throat> All right. Pretty quiet this morning as far as the chat and the QFA, Q and A. So let me switch over to uh, protective puts. I'm going to bring our screen down. to take a look at, okay, this is Investopedia and this is really what you need to know. So the question of the day is, how do I protect my portfolio? Can I buy insurance for my portfolio? And the question, the answer is yes, you can. And you do that specifically by uh, buying out of the money puts, which is what you're looking at right here on the screen. Now, when you think of, and people use the math of, well, if I insure my car, which is worth, I don't know, 30000 or 50000 and I insure my house, which is worth two hundred to 500000 whatever your, you know, your house is worth, if I have a million-dollar portfolio, why wouldn't I insure that? And it's just like, well, that makes sense. And usually the person telling you that sells these things, right, because they scare you into buying insurance that you may or may not need. So while theoretically that sounds correct, right? I should insure something that's worth that much. Well, let's talk about the purpose of insurance. So what is the purpose of insurance? Is to pass the risk in case of a catastrophic loss. To pass the risk in case of a catastrophic loss. So do you need life insurance if you are worth five million? Well, if you're worth five million, and something happens to somebody in the family, generally your burial expenses are 15 to 20,000. Can you afford that? Yep, I could carve that out of five mil. Um, if it's the breadwinner, uh, if, if you have a five million net worth and you're, you know, live in a mansion and you have $5 million worth of experience expenses, then yeah, maybe uh, you would need insurance. But if you buy insurance in that case, you're gonna need a couple million dollars of insurance, which is gonna be very expensive. If you are retired and you're worth over a million, 
you don't need life insurance, right? You need 30K, 20 to 30K to put you in the ground, get you taken care of, get everybody else all set up, and that's it. So you don't need life insurance at, that, at some point. So that's called being self-insured. If you are from a very rich family or a family that's got plenty of money to be able to handle, like if you're a child, uh, do you need a life insurance on a 16-year-old? No. Um, if something happens, obviously that's a tragedy, but you know, 15 to 20 K to put them into the ground, take care of everybody. Maybe if the parents can't work, you might consider that, are they going to lose their jobs if they lost a child? In that case, you might consider it. But I mean, that's, that's really kind of out there, right? Um, so generally you don't need insurance. Car insurance, obviously you're required to have it for liability perspective, but as far as your comprehensive coverage, that's really on whether you want to pay for your, you know, dings and you know what you run into out there right so so when you think of portfolio insurance it's just like well do i need to insure do i need to pass the risk of catastrophic loss well usually not right i mean if you're if you have a million dollar portfolio golf clap you've done well that didn't magically happen so you know good job on getting there but if your portfolio would drop from a million to 900,000, is that catastrophic for you? Or can you not pay the electricity bill based on that drop? Uh, yeah, you can. Uh, you know, so now psychologically, maybe there's things playing with, maybe you have a $1.1 million portfolio and you cannot stomach, you would not be able to sleep at night if it fell below the million level. Well, don't buy insurance in that case. Sell, lock in your gains. Take all ultra conservative uh, investments. I mean, that would be a dumb move for long term performance. But if that's your goal is to stop the drop, then sell to stop the drop. Don't buy portfolio insurance. So, anyhow, if you want to buy a put out there, what's going to happen is you're going to pay a bunch of money for, any, for something like any insurance. You don't want it to happen. You want it to be a complete waste of money. You want it to be like taking money and putting it in the toilet and flushing it because you don't want to have the event happen that causes you to get paid on your insurance. So if you have a portfolio of a million dollars, you could do all the math to figure out what sort of put I would need to buy to insure that. And it's going to be ridiculously expensive, generally along the lines of 10%. So are you gonna pay $100,000 to insure your portfolio against losing $100,000? No, that would make no sense. But there are people that will tell you that it's gonna make a bunch of sense. And generally it's because they're trying to sell you this stuff. So there's other options out there. Now, if you can't sell, and there are times when you can't sell, i.e. you bought Apple at $5 and now it's at post split, uh, you know, 120. So you've made, I don't know, what's that? Can't do math this morning, 2000%. Yeah, if you would owe a huge tax bill for selling, there's times when you can't sell. And if that's the case, then maybe you need to put that insurance in place because you'd rather throw that money away than pay the government for selling. So there's a time to use it. Uh, and they can go through, if you want to go to, um, you can marry a put to where you, which is down here, where you actually put the puts against the actual positions, uh, which is very time intensive and very expensive. Or what most people do is they have, I don't know, 20 to 50 names in their portfolio is they just put a buy a put against an index like the SPY that we talk about every day. And you're going to pay through the nose to do that. But certainly if the market falls through, you are going to be able to insure, you know, basically insure with an I, insure as an insurance, not insure with an E, but insure yourself against further losses. So the scenarios and where that makes sense are almost zero. So there's other things out there, uh, including some of the instruments I talked about earlier today. So just really scratch the surface on that topic. So if you wanna know more, reach out to me and we can go from there. So let's check back to see how our markets are doing. NASDAQ's down in percent again, so kind of rolling off the, uh, the cliff. For the NASDAQ, again, this is the SPY. There's plug going straight down. Let's put the Qs here. So that's what you're seeing out of the Qs. So we were already up here and now they're down over a percent. So it looks like we're going to get that uh, big sell off. We shall see, I don't know, we're 16 minutes into the game. Uh, here's your VIX spiking back higher. So more red here, 
more more green here so i need to uh, get off the horn here and start picking my stops for scaling out of the vxx so and as you can see with our short obviously uh, this would have been down an hour or so had we not been bumped out right there so all right that's what i've got for you today thank you so much for listening have a great weekend kentucky derby is tomorrow it's weird to say kentucky derby in september uh but uh don't miss it tomorrow 5 50 uh, central is the post time and with that i will let you guys go and catch up with you next week have a good one